Welcome, Hanu and Ken. You're joint conveners, I think, of the uh, Professional Learning and Development Network in ERA. Can I ask you, what's the main idea which brings people to your network? The focus is on professional development, professional learning, the way in which professionals keep up to date, the way in which they keep at cutting edge, the way in which they actually look towards the future and say, OK, am I prepared to bring in to the people I'm educating really these things that are coming at us in education? So in its broader sense, it's professional development and professional learning. OK, then perhaps you can answer this next one. What's the main topics? Say this year, I know topics change from time to time, but what's the topics which people in your network are bringing up? Oh, there are so many of them, but um, well, there are things like uh, well, uh, mentoring of new teachers and uh, professional development, of course, in its many, many, many forms. Um. So we're looking at research, we're looking, as Hanu says, on mentoring, on coaching. Um, on observation, on um, the way in which other countries look at professional learning. So all of these things come into our network. Yeah. Well, that's a very good lead in then to my next question, really, which is how your network contributes to European educational research. The clue is in the word network. Yes. And that really is where the strength of ERA and the strength of Network One comes in because we can draw in, we, we can learn by ourselves professionally just by being by ourselves. But the strength of professional learning comes from interaction and networking and that's where the European dimension is so important. So then, what do you value in terms of education research, in terms of how it benefits society? In terms of benefiting society, we need to be critical. And I think in terms of educational research and research into professional learning, it's very easy to lose the critical edge, to lose that criticality which says, hang on, yes, you've done that research and now you've published it. I'm not sure, even though the research is valid, I'm not sure that will impact anywhere else because it is pure for your own circumstance and your own context. So we need a critical edge. We need to look at research and say, yeah, that is we can enact that in different contexts, we can enact that internationally across European dimensions and because there are people from other uh, outside Europe attending uh, the ESA, ESA conference internationally and globally. So the ERA mission statement, ERA has yeah. Uh, quite well-defined mission statement. How do you see yourselves contributing to that mission statement? We also have had discussion within our, our own network uh, just about that. If, if we can actually cover the very, very, actually very different cultural and political and social contexts in our network. So we deliberately have been trying to, to include the people from the eastern and the southern Mediterranean area much more. So what makes your network unique? Because we can focus on professional development and bring that into the core of what we're referring to. But it brings professional learning to the front of what we're discussing rather than the context in which they're working with professional learning. Now here I'm going to give you both a quick answer on the next question. Think back over your network the last two or three years, hmm. think of one thing that you're particularly proud of that you've done. Yeah, I would say that, uh, let's say back uh, for five years we have recognized that uh, the, the convener team was actually most uh, consisted of males. We had only one female actually, and we had an issue with the gender balance. And now it's uh, now now it's 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 all right really, so that now we have it's more more or less even, and uh, that is also very important for for the future of the network. And for me, when we uh, tried, we wanted to change the name of them to professional learning and development. And to do that, we engaged the conveners in the network. We went to the network meetings. We said, look, this is our proposal. What do you think? 
and the amount of discussion and debate and interaction and comment which came as a result of that was really, really powerful and really interesting. And that, for me, shows that you can mobilise people into thinking, looking critically and then contributing to our way forward. So that, for me, was the strongest. Yeah. So, so is your network, um, is it connected to other groups, national associations? Uh, I am managing editor of the journal Professional Development and Education and we give an award for the best paper in uh, Network One. So in that way and also the International Professional Development Association, IPTA, is uh, linked through that. So we actually um, engage with those two organisations through Network One in ERA um, to actually try and get dialogue and a common way forward. So that is, uh, is, is one way in which we work. Now, say someone's putting in a proposal, say they've not come before to one of your networks, and they're thinking, well, for 2020, I think I'd be quite interested in coming to that network. What are you looking for in a proposal from them? First of all, it must have a focus on professional development, professional learning. If it doesn't have that focus, or if it's marginal, we'll say, look, you, you really ought to be in another network. But if, that, if there is a clear focus on professional learning or professional development, then we will look for a critical edge to that and to say, are you really looking critical at what you're doing, at what your research is doing, at the context in which you're doing it? Can it apply to other contexts? And um, obviously there's a research base we're looking for, which has to be valid and appropriate, and a good literature base as well, which really is up to date and, and strong in terms of saying, yep, this is what we're talking about, and we have read the most recent literature, relevant recent literature, on the topic. What do you like about ECER? Well, um, I've been going to this ECER conference every single year since 1996, when it, it was in Sevilla, and you can imagine, well, I would say 100 of my best friends are always here. So it's lovely to see the guys again. And you, Ken? I think when we're talking about professional learning, you can do that in a formal sense. Yep, I've been some, to some really good sessions where I've learned a lot. But really, it's talking to Hanu from Finland, it's talking to other colleagues, just bumping into them or being over a beer or a glass of wine later yeah. on in the receptions and then just talking to people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing how much you learn and how many contacts you make yeah. from that. And it's great to come mm. together and I think one of the things Hanu we're looking at doing is perhaps using ERA funding a little bit more constructively yeah. and perhaps have one more meeting in the year of conveners. Yeah. Yeah. where we can come together and really say, right, strategically, how do we want to go forward on this? And that's, that's in our, one of our proposals this year. Yeah. And my very last question, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? There are, maybe this is a politically sensitive issue, but uh, I've been thinking about the language of, um, from many perspectives and uh, it's very obvious that we, our form of um, kind of media for communication, it has to be English, of course. Just remember that we have big language areas also in Europe, like the big German speaking area. Uh, French is a big language and it happens to be that Spanish actually happens to be one of the biggest languages in, the, in, the, in this globe. But anyway, we are communicating through the medium of English. And it, it very easily actually means also that uh, is but kind of um, I would say kind of cultural imperialism through the medium of English without nobody's intention. Mm -hmm. That actually what happens. Other mm -hmm. languages and especially the minority languages are very very easily then uh, blocked out and, uh, and kind of neglected. And that, that is maybe something we have also to pay attention to. Well, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Um, I've enjoyed the interview. Thank you. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you very much. Thanks.